Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another video. My name is Patrick. I'm a husband, I'm a dad, and along with being a worship pastor at a church, I run my own tech company. Now, how on earth did I get into tech? Well, I walked into an Apple store one day. Why was I walking into an Apple store? Because I needed to buy my first ever computer and my buddy Nick, who worked there, said, you should buy a Mac. Well, I fell in love and eventually I got a job at that very Apple store. Eventually I moved to New York and I transferred to the Apple store in Soho in Manhattan, the first ever Apple store in New York. And it was inside of this abandoned USPS building, postal service for those of you outside of America, where we sort the mail and deliver the mail and all that sorts of stuff. And I loved working there. And it used to be that Apple was this kind of niche product that some people knew about and some people didn't. But now, you know, Apple is super popular. They're everywhere. And I'm sure everyone you know has either been to an Apple store or purchased something from an Apple store. But I bet you've never heard the secrets of the Apple store from a former employee. Stay with me. So yes, I was an Apple Store employee for quite a few years and I had a ton of different jobs at the Apple Store. I was a specialist, which is basically a salesperson. I was number 26 in the company, the whole company for sales. I sold a lot of Apple stuff. Wow. Then I became a lead Mac specialist, meaning that I was kind of like running the floor for the big wig managers, partnering customers with specialists and you know, kind of just running the show. And then eventually there was some other things in my life that I was really passionate about. So I popped back down to part-time and eventually became a theater presenter. Now, a theater presenter is not something that you will find in every Apple store. A theater presenter is something that only existed at that time at the Soho store at Apple, where there was this little theater where we would have special events. Oh my gosh! And when we weren't having one of those special events, and we didn't have one every day, so all throughout the day when those special events weren't happening, we were giving free classes teaching people how to use their Mac, how to use their iPhone, how to use their Apple Watch, or even software that came on your Mac. As a matter of fact, when the first iPad was released, no one saw one until the day it came out. Yeah, it kind of was previewed on some award shows and things like that, but no one held it in their hand and was able to play with it until the day it was released. So they walk up to me very secretively, the big bosses, and I'm a theater presenter at the time, and they say, this is your iPad. Now, not mine to keep. I got really excited, but it wasn't for me. And they said, while we're selling these iPads today for the first time ever, I want you to teach this all day. Now I'm looking down at the thing going, I've never seen this thing before. How am I gonna teach on it? It was basically a big iPod touch or a big iPhone. We all know that now. And I'm able to figure that out really quickly as I'm fumbling through the iPad. But I got my own little special iPad as a theater presenter, not to keep, but to train people with. And I got to show it off all day. It was a really, really, really cool job. But working at Apple, I learned the ins and outs of what to do in an Apple store, what not to do in an Apple store, and maybe some things that you didn't know that's gonna make your next Apple store experience better. So number one, right off the bat, let me just go ahead and say, utilize the Apple Store. You may not know this, but there are all sorts of free classes, free trainings that you can take advantage of. If you go to retail.apple.com, you can find your Apple Store's website and see if they have any type of classes. Now you might be thinking, well, my Apple Store doesn't have a theater. Well, it's not uncommon to walk into an Apple Store and see someone with a little headset mic just gathered around a table like we're at now, showing people how to use the Photos app or showing people how to use use the iPhone or showing people how to use the iPad. So utilize those free services that you see inside the Apple store, but look for them because maybe you didn't even know that they exist. Now the number one free service that the Apple store offers every single person that walks through the door is the Genius Bar. Utilize the Genius Bar. Sure, if you're having a problem with your Apple product, you can hop online and see if you can fix it yourself, see what people are talking about. But making an appointment at the Genius Bar is absolutely free. I live in Long Island City, New York. It is one train stop away from Grand Central. 
I am at the Grand Central store all the time. I make appointments to get my Apple Watch, my iPhone, my iPad, my MacBook, all looked at when I'm having a problem that I can't fix myself. I hop online, I make an appointment, I see a friendly face who knows how to answer my questions. They are always patient, they are always kind, and they may not give you the answer you want. For instance, this product is out of warranty, we are not going to fix it, but they are able to answer your questions. Now the Genius Bar experience is different different than every other company out there because when you're at the Genius Bar with a MacBook Pro, with an iPhone, with an iPad, you are dealing with a device made by the company called Apple that has software on it made by the company called Apple in the store that was built and staffed by the company called Apple. So you are at a place that is able to speak into every single aspect of the product you're having issues with. If you go to Best Buy, there's one company, and buy an HP laptop, there's another company, and use Windows on that laptop, that's a third company. I have no problem with all three of those companies, but I will say that sometimes getting to the root of issues can be a problem because you're dealing with three different companies that have three different ways of dealing with issues with the product you bought. Now, I'm just simply saying, if you got a problem with your Apple product, utilize the Genius Bar. It's going to give you peace of mind. Speaking of Apple products, I just wanna mention, don't be afraid to buy refurb. Now, this isn't something that you could do in the Apple store, so it's not necessarily an Apple employee secret, but it is something that a lot of people don't know about. If you wanna go out there and buy the newest, best, highest end Apple product that they have to offer, you're not gonna find that on the refurb site. But maybe you're purchasing a computer for someone who doesn't need the, the, the highest end thing. Maybe a, a MacBook Air that's a generation or two old, uh, or maybe your uh, daughter or your son or your grandma or your grandpa or your sibling, maybe they just need a computer that's decent that can do basic administrative tasks. They don't need the newest and best thing. Go to the refurb site. If you simply Google Apple refurbished products, it's going to take you to Apple's refurbished site, their official refurbished site. And what you can do there is buy a refurb product from Apple that might be a generation or two old, but it has been tested and approved for sale by Apple. And not only that, it comes with the same exact warranty that a brand new Apple product comes with. So you literally cannot lose. Besides missing out on some of the newest and best features, which you may not even need, going with the refurb product directly from Apple is a win almost all the time. Now here's something that a lot of people don't know. When you walk into an Apple store and walk up to that random person in the Apple shirt with the name tag that's all ready to help you and smiling, you are probably not talking to a technical professional. Is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. You are talking to someone who has been highly trained in how to listen to your needs and provide a solution. And if needed, they can go find someone else to answer your questions if they themselves don't have the answers. See, that's why Apple customer service is so good. When you walk into an Apple store, yeah, you're gonna see a bunch of nerds, but it's not a bunch of nerds who are gonna talk down to you about every technical aspect of every single product. You might find that person, but not everybody is that person. But everyone has been trained to listen well to your needs and provide you with a solution. It's called the Apple Steps of Service, and it's an acronym, and it's A-P-P-L-E. You see, when I was on the floor selling products as a Mac specialist at Apple, I was taught to A, approach people. You won't find a lot of people standing around just going, you come to me. You're gonna find Apple specialists coming up to you and engaging with you. The next P is probe. Yeah. See, Apple employees are trained to ask probing questions, open-ended questions, in fact. They don't say, what computer do you want? They say, hey, how's your day going? What brought you into the Apple store today? And you're gonna get a myriad of answers from that question that they will then take and direct towards, well, hey, what do you see on this table that you like? Or have you used our products before? You see what I mean? You ask these probing questions that get people talking and uh, allow them to feel comfortable with what sometimes is an uncomfortable situation, sales. 
We approach, we probe, then we present a solution. Well, based on what I've heard you say, I think I would steer you in one of these directions. You present a solution. After presenting that solution, you, L, listen. You listen to their feedback and adjust accordingly. And then finally, E, you end. Approach, probe, present, listen, end. So when you walk into an Apple store, you're not going to find someone that is just there to pick apart your idea. You're going to find someone who has been taught to ask the right questions and listen to your needs. So if you're looking for that person that's just going to be able to answer every single question that you have, don't get frustrated. They're not trained technicians. They are good listeners who can find the answer to your question. So be patient, they're there to help. Here's a secret that you may or may not know, but Apple Store employees don't make commission. So treat them as such. If you walk into an Apple Store, keep in mind that for about eight hours and 45 minutes, these people have been bombarded with other customers who thought that their sale was going to change that Apple Store employee's life. No. They make an hourly wage just like everybody else in that store. So if you treat them with respect and ask the questions that you have, they are going to give you solutions that are going to help you. So don't walk into an Apple store, up to an Apple store employee thinking that your sale is going to change their world. It's just simply not. They're an hourly employee just like everybody else in that building. So if you feel like they're not giving you the time you deserve, let them know. But just keep in mind that no matter what you buy from them, they're making the same amount of money. So they're not going to upsell you. Yeah, it looks good if you make big sales as a Mac specialist, but upselling does not help them one iota. They're probably really just trying to help you. Okay, this is a big one, and you've got to know this secret, but come in close with this one. There is nothing a manager at the Apple Store can't do but there are plenty of things they won't do. Let me explain. So when I was a lowly Apple Store employee, there was this guy I was helping who wanted to buy a new iPod. We buy him the new iPod, we plug it into his old iBook. Remember those? Now his iBook was ancient and the iPod said, oh hey, I need to download a software update to work with this iBook. Now back then, the Wi-Fi inside of the Apple stores was not fast and it took for hours, not a joke, to download the software update for this iPod to work with his iBook. After it was done, the iPod still wouldn't work. And we finally just went, wait a minute, after doing a ton of troubleshooting, turned the box over, looked at the system requirements. His iBook was so old, the USB ports did not have the requirements to work with the iPod he just purchased. And the dude stayed super cool. I was like, I'm so sorry, sir. I am so sorry. He's like, uh, it happens. I guess I just have to return this. One of our employees walked downstairs, found my manager and said, you know what I want to do? I want to surprise and delight this guy. He picked up a brand new computer that had all the system requirements and more to work with this simple little iPod. Walked upstairs and goes, dude, boom, here's a new computer. Enjoy your iPod. You tell me that an Apple store can't do something and I will call you a liar straight to your face. But there are plenty of things that the Apple store won't do. Let me give you an example. I needed help with a product that was having issues. I think it was a cracked screen or something like that. I took it down to an Apple store, made an appointment at my local store, the Grand Central Station store. And I walked in and I said, hey guys, can you help me out? I know this is accidental damage, but can you help me out with this product? I really need to get it fixed. It's only a few months old. I know that I'm the one that cracked the screen. And they looked down and they said, we're just not going to be able um, uh, to do that this, at this time. And I said, you're not able to or, or you won't? You know, we just, um, I can't see a way that we're going to be able to fix this. Okay, again, so you're not able to or you, you won't do it. I went back and forth with this young lady for quite some time and I wasn't being snide. I wasn't being rude. I was just simply asking now, are you telling me no, or are you saying you can't do it? And she would not say no. We kind of come to this stalemate. We're, we're both being kind. Nobody was frustrated, but she wouldn't say no. She would just say we're unable to do this. And I kept pushing her saying, I think you are able. You're just telling me that you won't 
do this. And she wouldn't come out and just say no. She was giving me all that fluffy, fun, retail language. And then I said, hey, listen, you're doing a great job. No, no drama between us. I know we've got a great rapport, but could I talk to a manager just to plead my case? She said, sure. Guess what happened? She walks right over to her manager. I watch her walk over to her manager. And it happens to be, I didn't know this, it happened to be a former manager of mine from when I worked at the Soho Apple store. So I'm like, oh man, I could have lucked out here. She explains the case to him and I see him go, oh, you know, yeah, I, I think you're in the right. And then he, I see him kind of say, who is it? So she points over to me and I say, hey man. And he goes, oh, hey, looks right back at her and goes, just do it. Don't tell me an Apple store can't do what you want. Tell me that they won't do what you want. Now, the point I'm trying to make is this. When you walk into an Apple store and you have an issue, it's okay to push a little hard for what you want. Now, they're not gonna change their prices, they're not gonna change their policies, but there are sometimes situations where you have that crack screen, you're a month out of your uh, warranty, and you just kinda go, hey guys, can you do me a favor? And they just go, you know what? Sure. It never hurts to ask. Don't tell me an Apple store can't do something. Tell me they won't. Now, with that being said, one rule of thumb, any Apple Store employee will tell you this. It's no secret, buy Apple Care. Trust me, you are going to be thrilled. You're purchasing Apple products and you're buying Apple Care and you're saying, I never use this at all and I feel like I'm throwing away money. It's worth it the one time you have to go in and they say, oh, well, you're one month out of your warranty, but oh, I see here you have Apple Care. We're totally going to cover this. You are going to think you are the smartest person in the room. Buy Apple Care for your Apple products. It's a no-brainer. There's no secret here. It's going to help you in the long run. All right, here's a big one. Apple Store employees don't know what the company is doing. We don't know what the company is doing. If you want to know about what products are coming down the pipeline, we are reading the same rumor blogs that you are. No one knows except the big wigs at Apple. I once had this situation where I was working the sales floor at the Apple Store in Soho. And this was right when the white and black MacBook came out where we switched from a matte screen to a glossy screen on these 13 inch plastic laptops. They were so new that we only had two of them, one white model and one black model. And it was my job that night on the floor for about an hour and a half to hold these two computers. They weren't even secured down to a table or anything to hold these two computers and just show them to people that wanted to see the new product. Cause it was kind of a big deal that we went from this matte finished screen to a glossy screen. And as you know, now all the screens are glossy. It worked out and people are oogling over these two computers. They're coming up and they're touching them and, and can I hold it? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I can't let anybody hold it. It's just to be able to show everybody. And everybody's just having a good time saying, oh wow, this is really cool. Then this one guy walks in, walks up to me, looks at the computers, looks back at me, looks at the computers and just snarls and goes, this is the worst decision you guys have ever made. And I looked right back at him, dead in his eyes, and went, I didn't make this decision. Apple Store employees have no control over future products. So if you're sitting there asking your Apple friend who works at the store over in Jersey saying, when's the new fill in the blank coming out? They don't know. They don't know. Now, second part, this is a two-parter. Apple Store employees can get discounts, but guess what? They only get a few. It's kind of a package deal and they're probably gonna use them for friends and family and themselves. It's not the wild, wild west when you're an Apple Store employee where you can just walk in there, flash your badge and get 25% off everything. It's just not like that because if that was the case, they would be buying products like crazy and probably reselling them. As a matter of fact, when you buy discounted products as an Apple Store employee under the Apple discount program, you're actually not allowed to sell it for I think it's two years. Now that may have changed, but when I worked there, it was two years. So if you're out there thinking your Apple Store buddy can get you all the discounts in the world, they can. So fellow Apple Store customers, now I'm the head of the customers since I was promoted to customer, former employee promoted to customer, fellow 
Apple Store customers. I hope this list was helpful for you. And I hope the next time you walk into an Apple Store, this empowers you to make some decisions or change the way you're shopping around. But I am not going to claim to know every secret about working at Apple. Maybe there's some former Apple employees out there or current Apple employees that want to drop a line in the comments and let me know something I forgot. If you have a question about working at Apple, if you have a question about the Apple Store, let me know in the comments. And then do all the other YouTube things. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, share this video with somebody who's shopping for Apple products, and I will see you in the next one.